All right, now I'm going to show you how one makes a Yagi antenna for a 4G network. First, I went to this uh, DX Zone web page. This page has an online uh, calculation script to calculate a Yagi antenna for different frequencies. I started by selecting 847 MHz, setting the boom size to 10 mm and the driver and parasitic elements to 6 mm. Then this gives me these results. So here you can see the spacing between the elements and the length of the respective elements. So the next thing to do is to, to cut the pieces. I start by putting everything up in the lathe. Here I choose to do the drilling also in the lathe and this is because I wanted to have all the holes along the boom to be uh, centered. Otherwise each element might be angled a little bit to each other and I thought that this was a very neat and smart way to do it very easy so all the lines will be aligned. I use these two supports to, to hold the uh, boom while I drill it and uh, then I drag the boom through the supports by using this uh, by using the slider on top. So it will be a total of 11 holes that I have to drill. After I have drilled the first hole, I put in an aluminum piece inside it, so I can align it for the second hole. This, uh, is needed, but uh, in the rest of the holes this will not be required because the slider will hold the aluminum piece uh, at a fixed position. I need to move the slider back and forth and make a new grip because my lathe is quite short in its bench. Here you see another view of it. Yeah, now I drilled all the holes. Let's check to see if they are aligned. Yeah, it looks good, right? Next thing would be to cut the elements. I use a 6mm element as in the calculation and for these I use the tubings, not solids. I take the hacksaw and make a rough cut of all the elements. I continue working in the lathe because of lack of workspace. So here is all the rough cut elements. It should be 11 in total. Yeah, now I check the schedule. Yeah, 166.19 millimeters for this one. All right, let's measure that precisely. It must be to within one millimeter of a currency. So it is not so critical. Yeah, that's 166, right? Then I put it in a later and make the fin final cutting of the length. 
it's uh, perhaps a little overkill of using the late, but uh, the cuts were very, very neat. I cut both ends on each element. So here it comes, one by one. All the eleven elements. They get shorter and shorter the further out on the boom you get. I tried to solder this, but it was of no use. So then I've come up with this very neat idea of using this cream tongue. And it actually get very rigid and fixated very and was fixated very well. And besides that it was very fast also. I crimp each element on each side of the boom like this. That makes the, the element tubing to be a little bit thicker after pressing. And that makes it to get stuck in the hole of the boom. I mark out the center of the element and then I subtract the diameter of the boom from it. This makes it more easy to align them centrally across the boom. Alright, here comes the deep hole antenna that will be fitted. That must be isolated from the boom. So first I, I lay it down here, you see a smaller dimension of it. Take off one millimeter in diameter. So now this uh, pipe will be five millimeter at the center in here. The drilled hole was six millimeter. And that would give me enough spacing to put in some isolating plastic material between the boom and the element. Then I cut the deep pool antenna in two here. That's because you need to do that in order to uh, connect the cables later. These two must be separated electrically. So after I'm mounting the plastic piece later now on, there will be a small spacing between these, these two pipes. Some final trimming on the ends. Yeah, that is nice, right? So now I start to work with the plastic uh, isolating material. This is just acetotic plastic. I start by drilling a hole in it. Then I drill with the final dimension. This will be the 5 mm dimension because it will fit the, the newly laid tubing. I think it's good to have some support on this. This will be very thin now. This was the only plastic material I had, uh, so it was a little bit thick in dimension. So sort of a little waste of material here, but what do you do? Hmm, like so, almost finished now. Yeah. Yeah, that looks nice. Six millimeter on the outside. That will fit inside the boom now. So let's cut this off now. That's it. Let's try it. So here you see it fits on these two elements. So this unit will make the deep pull antenna then, right? Time to connect the cable now. I use RG174 for this. 
Perhaps you can use a thicker one, but this one fits neatly inside this uh, deep pool element from the side. So, and uh, my uh, modem is not located very close, so it's no no need to use any bigger cables. The losses will be quite little anyway. Perhaps a few decibel. So I pull the cable through the pipe, and then I uh, make the outer cord. Uh, folded around the outside of it. I put on the plastic piece and then I take the inner center line and attach that to the other metallic piece and then I joint everything together. I also put glue on this. That's not showed in the picture now. I crimped the final connector on the other side. Then I plug in the deep pull antenna into the boom. Now you can see it's isolated from the antenna. Then I check if everything is straight. This technique makes it actually very straight in the beginning. You don't need to adjust so much. A few elements is a little bent, so I need to correct that. But uh, otherwise I think it looks quite neat. Yeah, and here is the final result. I made two antennas. And that's because I want to have MIMO connection with the cell tower. And uh, one of the uh, antennas is uh, constructed for 847 MHz, while the other one is for 806 MHz. And that's because one is uplink and downlink, so I wanted to optimize them for each. The next thing will be to, to try them in pair and see what uh, bandwidth I will get with this. But I think it looks promising. Hope you liked the video. Bye.